friends, welcome to another video tutorial of Shomu's Biology. In the last video lecture, we just talked about Sanger method of DNA sequencing, which is also known as dideoxy DNA sequencing. And we saw it's very simple but elegant way of sequencing short stretch of the DNA. That is the advantage of Sanger sequencing. But the biggest disadvantage is that we cannot apply Sanger sequencing or DIDXC sequencing for larger genome. For example, human genome. And when we require to sequence human genome, uh, for many different, uh, enormous different types of works that we need. Uh, Sanger sequencing will take so much greater time to complete the process. And it is simply not effective enough to give us a proper sequence of the human DNA. So we need to find a way to sequence large genome like human genome. So we apply and produce shotgun DNA sequencing. Shotgun DNA sequencing is not a unique DNA sequencing application which also involves Sanger method of DNA sequencing or uh, right now Illumina sequencing or any other pilot sequencing or any other next generation sequencing mechanisms to finally get unique unit sequence of every single DNA. But shotgun sequencing is an idea to break larger genome into smaller fragments first then sequence each of the smaller fragments and then finally join all the sequences together with the help of algorithms and computer to find out the sequence completely. That was the idea of shotgun sequencing. So shotgun sequencing is not as a unit sequencing like Sanger sequencing or Illumina sequencing or 454 sequencing or uh, pyro sequencing like that. It's simply a method of compiling all the data from different sequencing and give us an idea about the huge genome like the human genome, right? So what we do here for the shotgun sequencing, Shotgun sequencing say, let's say we have a huge DNA. The huge DNA should be broken down into smaller fragments. So break them down with mechanical shearing. But this breakage is not any specific kind. It's a random breaking. Like so you take the DNA in different reaction mix, we break it randomly. So in different mix, we have different fragments generated. We don't know the exact length of the fragment generated, but we make sure the length is smaller enough so that we can run uh, the Sanger method or dideoxy method of sequencing for each of the fragments. That's what we, we only wanted to know. So once we make all these different fragments length in different places, like say for, for another tube, another reaction mix, uh, the same process containing the same DNA, but different length of the DNA is obtained. So by this fashion, we have different fragments produced in different reaction mix. Now once we produce all the smaller fragments, we take that smaller fragment and we sequence them individually to get a unique sequence of each of this unknown DNA fragment. Now this sequencing we use with Sanger sequencing. This we use with Sanger sequencing or dideoxy sequencing. We can also use uh, the pyro sequencing or any other next generation sequencing, faster sequencing techniques nowadays if you do. But ultimately we, frag we, we get the sequence of each of those fragments. Now these fragments are known as contigs, okay, or contiguous sequences. Because these sequences, as I told you, in different reaction tubes, same DNA broken down randomly without like any other specification, without any specification. So whatever sequence, we get different lengths of the band and we got the sequence for all these small fragments of the DNA. Now once we get all these thousands and thousands of small fragments, we compile the data because once you get the sequence from all those different fragments, we put the length of the fragments and the data into a computer and we want the computer to analyze the data. So what the computer will do now, the computer will put all these fragments together to find out the overlapping regions. As we break down the same DNA in multiple ways, there will be so many overlapping regions between those DNA. That's what we can find out with the algorithm and the software in the computer. Once we find out the overlapping regions, what we can get a complete stretch of the sequence. For example, uh, let me erase here. Let's say for a very basic example, we can say like we start with A, S, G, G, C, T, then start with T, C, 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 A, C, then say C, A, C, T, T, A, G, G, then uh, A, G, G, C, G, A, T. So let's say these are the different fragments that we obtain from different reaction mix. And once we compile the data, what we find out, we, we call these fragments as contigs or contiguous sequences. So whenever we find out these contigs, 
we try to align them to find out overlapping regions. See, we find so many overlapping regions in between them. These overlapping se sequences is going to tell us about complete stretch of the sequence like now A, G, G, then C, T, C, 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 A, C, T, T, A, G, G, C, G, A, T. This is how we get a sequence, long stretch of the sequence. So let's say if this is the DNA, we cannot sequence this complete DNA alone with Sander method effectively. So what we did, we break them down, we separate, uh, sequence them separately, then we put the data to find out the overlapping sequences and then we compile the data to get the continuous DNA fragment. This is what shotgun sequencing is all about. Okay. Now, if you want to know about Sanger sequencing and what Sanger sequencing actually did or dioxy sequencing actually did, which we talked earlier, I want you to watch the video on dioxy sequencing. The link of the video is provided in the description as well as you probably see it in the le uh, left side of this of this video panel in YouTube. So, watch that video to understand the dioxy method in details. But in shotgun method, there is no unique uh, idea. But the, the approach here is simply to break and simplify the large DNA fragments into smaller ones okay now in the, the only disadvantage of shotgun sequencing you know the advantage of shotgun sequencing is that you can sequence a uh, data which is a huge genome by breaking them down and the breaking is random so you don't need to use any restriction in enzymes or any specific enzymes in there but the disadvantage is also same way as this this breaking down of the DNA is random in nature the disadvantage is sometimes Due to this random breakage and stuff, some nucleotides are cleaved out. They're lost due to some reason. Because as we're dealing with like thousands and thousands and thousands stretch of long of the genome sequences, many nucleotides may be lost from the reaction mix or may not be properly uh, sequenced. So if there is a missing data in the sequence, if you don't find any overlapping regions, then that part of the DNA sequence remain unknown. And that's what happened when you apply shotgun sequencing for the human genome project. Many regions of the human genome, the, the sequence of the human genome remains untold because we fail to find out those sequences. This thing also happened. And that's also a disadvantage of this shotgun method of DNA sequencing. But ultimately, the methods that we use, either shotgun or Sanger sequencing, it actually utilizes any of this uh, unique DNA sequencing method, right, to ultimately give us a data, okay. So that's all about shotgun DNA sequencing. If you like this video, please hit the like button, share this video with your friends and subscribe to my channel to get more and more videos like this.